I was just telling telling Steve and everybody how when you were you met, you would you'd be driving somewhere up on nine ninety five and you'd call Eddie Eddie Coleman and me on WFA and promote your program. It was a lot of good stuff, man. It seems like yesterday in some regard. How about playing midnight games? Get on TV. That's right. I remember. I remember did a, did a couple of your games at midnight. Yeah, it's come a long way, pal. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to survive, holding on like everybody else right now. <laughs> how different is it, Coach, um, with COVID, and how are you protecting the kids, and how are you protecting yourself, and how are you still getting all the work done? Well, first of all, I always get that with me. Okay, just took it off. Um, uh, we we have a unique situation here. Um, we have a lodge that they live in. Only the I players, yeah. Yeah. they have their own room, their own bathroom, There's a security. Um, they're not in a general dorm. So they're, they're, there's a cook chef that cooks their meals right in that building. No one comes in the building, so we're safe there. They walk across the parking lot, our practice facility. No one else in it. It's washed down a couple times a day. They can go in in the morning, evenings, whenever they want to go in around our practice, um, the weight room, the training room. And so there's no reason unless they break the bubble, unless they go out. And so um, they understand it. And, and, and for us right now, we're doing everything, even having chips that I, I'll wear a wristband and in their uh, practice gear. There's a chip that tells us how close we're to each other inside of six feet and for how long so that if someone does happen to catch it, we can mitigate like, who? well, in the last three days, who was he near? And, and what we're finding out is the big guy, the two big guys guarding each other, two guards may hit more than 15 minutes. Um, you know, most of it's not there. Us coaches or managers are never that close to them. So it's um, it's been pretty good. And uh, I worry when we start to travel, I wish we were going to pods, like uh, playing six, eight games at a time and then going home and then doing it again uh, in a in a uh, protected area. Uh, but we don't know yet. But um, wow, it's, uh, it's crazy. But I'm doing everything I can to make sure that we're trying to keep these kids safe. But it's hard. Could you imagine being a freshman, first time away from home? Your hormones are going, you're, and you can't go see anybody. You can't go meet anybody. You can't. I mean, we, we got to worry can't about imagine. mental health here, too. Look, you can't say, well, we traced a kid, and he's got no symptoms, and you're making him stay in a four-walled room, like a cell, for 14 days, and when the food's delivered, you knock on the door, wait 10 seconds so the person can get away from your door, take your meal. They don't treat hardened criminals that way. So right. how do you let them come out, be in the parking lot? How do we let them, they got no symptoms in your tracing, let them in the gym by themselves if it's one or two or three. I just keep coming back to, we got to guard against mental health too now. Yeah. Uh, that's this, a great. That's a great component, man. You got to have it. Wow. Um, I understand what twenty-seven games is going to be the max that you can play this year, and a minimum thirteen to get into the tournament. Is that NCAA tournament? Yeah, they're saying that, but you know, we don't know where this is going, and and uh, it'll be twenty-seven in your tournament, which would be end up being thirty games. But um, you know, you just don't know. You know, preseason uh, we. Look, we have a schedule, but I have backups. We're here to promote Jamaican basketball and uh, hope for a big future of Jamaican basketball. And you've been coaching one of the star players for Jamaica and Nick, uh, Nick Richards. And I just wonder if you could tell me about his development. I know develop, player development is a huge part of your, your gig. And uh, just tell us how Nick has developed in the years he's been with you. Well, he was here three years and uh, – one of the greatest kids, um, when we had our last meeting together, he said to me, Coach, I want to thank you because you believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And he looked at the staff and he says, that's for all of you. And he, big kids develop later, just how it is. But his skill set, his ability to jump, uh, shoot jump hooks, block shots, shoot balls, free throws, 
Um, he was like the runner-up for player of the year in the SEC. Uh, we win the league by three games, which is really unusual in our league. Um, but he's seven foot tall. I mean, he's that big and he's skilled. So, um, you know, I love him to death. He's one of the great kids that we've ever coached. But, uh, yeah, I, I, as you guys know, I spent time with the Dominican Republic, right. their national team. So, um, you know, we, I've coached in that uh, um, arena down there and had a ball. I mean, we, we had more fun, and um, I'll be honest, we should have been in the Olympics. Uh, we needed a, one or two. We lost to Brazil one year, and then one year we lost to, uh, what was the team from Africa? I mean, Cameroon? Who was it? Was it the Cameroon? No, it was the team that had the three college players oh, oh, oh. I'm on it. And they were good, but, you know, we went either of those. We're in the Olympics. And, uh, but we had a ball and, um, Carl Towns played on the last team, but he was so young, he wasn't playing much, you know, um, Francisco Garcia, you know, I start naming names. Edgar Sosa was playing and, and, you know, um, um, we, we had a bunch of, uh, you know, really good guys who could play and, uh, I had a ball doing it. What was the biggest challenge? And what was the biggest joy that you had in that experience? Well, the, the biggest challenge was getting them to understand that we can go to the Olympics and that we have good enough players to do it. And let's go and let's do it. We had to get by, as you guys know, uh, Puerto Rico. And I coached Edgar Padilla and Carmelo Trevier. So I had the first Latin backcourt in basketball that went to the final four. And um, we had to beat. Puerto Rico in Puerto Rico uh, to win the cup. And, and I'm so proud of that, being able to do that. Um, um, but we had a bunch of good guys. And, uh, you know, the biggest disappointment was the, the Brazil game. We had a chance to win and, um, you know, playing. I believe we were in Venezuela or where were we then? Maybe not. Maybe that year we were in uh, Argentina. Um, but, you know, for me, it was just getting to know the, the the FIBA game because let me tell you, there's a lot of holding and grabbing now. And then for the faint of heart, I mean, you're you you're gonna get grabbed and held and bumped and you know, time out. You're in the lane, you can get your head taken off, right? Oh my gosh, you know, you can get <laughs> you can get clotheslined. Just getting open is an experience. Just get open. Yeah. Normally you'd say, All right, get open. Dude said the dude got two hands around me and a leg. So, you know, coach, I'm a, an assistant unpaid high school basketball coach. So I feel like we're colleagues in a way. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Trust me. But um, I'm just wondering if there's a part of you that would like to maybe before you're done, go the other way, go to a, a Patriot League or somewhere where you, you're guaranteed of having kids for four years and just taking them through the process. Or, or am I just crazy? And I, I don't even know why I'm asking you this. Um, you're crazy. No, I'm. Uh, I'll say this to you. Um, I've always said, um, you know, we did it different ways. When I was at UMass, we had four year guys. Uh, one guy left in three years, and and it was three years, and that was Marcus Camby. We right. became top twenty, number one in the country. So. There are benefits and, and enjoyment and building a program and, and seeing year to year. Um, this challenge is different. Now, you guys, uh, they're saying my team's like a top five, you know, three, two, whatever they're saying. I have 10 new players. Like my team is no one returned. The one kid that returned, I should say, has been injured. So he hadn't been on the floor. So everything we're doing is to develop habits it's hard to start scrimmaging when they don't know how to get open. They don't know the timing of a wing pass. They don't know how to play a back screen, a down screen, a cross screen. They don't know how to play pick and roll defense. They've only been in high school, which meant they played for themselves, both on offense and defense, could care less about what happened behind them. And I got to get that together, yet build, help them build their own mastering their craft, their skills. Right. You got to spend more time in the gym. So both cases, they're different. 
I wouldn't mind being an Ivy League coach. I really wouldn't. I mean, that would be fun for me um, to know that, look, you know, these kids are, they're into basketball, they're smart, they want to win, yet they have different aspirations. When I'm recruiting kids, they have professional aspirations. Now, the scholarship players that sign here, nearly 70% of my players that scholarship get drafted. I don't know if you heard what I just said. That's a big number, man. That's a big number. Not a 5%, 10%, 70%. And of that number, 75% get to their second contract. That's a lot the of number money. of sa- the salary combined for just my guys from here um, is almost $3 billion. Not shoe contracts, all that. So it's a different deal. I go into a home and I look around and it looks like I grew up this way. And I said, if we all do what right is what's right, we all stick together. We all trust this process. It's not going to be like this long. And our kids, you know, every one of them have taken care of their mom, their families. They've done it right. And uh, I'm proud of them. I mean, we've had, look, my goal before I retire um, is to have 12 guys in the all-star game. That's <laughs> Could happen. You know, yeah. I think it's going to be the six, seven, eight here real quick. Cause Carl Towns and you know, you, you got Jamal Murray. Come on now. I mean, all of a sudden you're at seven, eight, all of a sudden, I just like to get to 12, which means half of the best players in the universe started with us. Yeah. Wow. I also like to have an undefeated season coach, because they tell me I can't do it. You can't, there's no way you'll ever be undefeated. So I said, all right, well, that's what we're trying to do then. <laughs> you had to have been thrilled that AD got that ring, huh? How about he's one of eight players to national title, world championship, gold medal, and uh, um, the uh, FIBA championship. Nice. He's one of eight players. In the history of the game. Wow. What do you remember about the first time you saw him? Um, uh, and and you, I re, he reminded me of Marcus Camby. Mm. See, I, when I see a guy like that, my first question was, did he go from 6'3 to 6'9? He <laughs> said, yes. I said, well, I could tell because that was Camby. Camby was 6'3, ends up being 6'11, 7' foot tall. He still had guard skills, guard feet, guard hands. Was Anthony? Um, we got another kid we're trying to get here, and I told him, I said, "Look, I've coached guys like you, and they've done pretty well." So when I saw him the first time, that's what I thought. When I went to visit him, the greatest thing is he had in in Chicago, he had grandmothers, uncles, cousins. We had fifteen people in there, and one of his comments, I told him, "This isn't for everybody." Now he said. <laughs> He said, Coach, I'm going to say this to you. He said, I don't care how you play me. I want to win, and I want to get better like your guys get better. And he did. And in the end, he's of my time here. He's the one that dragged us to a national title. Finished a bunch of Final Fours. My 15 team probably should have won the national title. We had a chance against Connecticut in the final game. I mean, we have some other chances, but I'll tell you what's really hard when you get down to those situations where they've never been in because they are so young, right. you don't know how they're going to respond. And our guys have responded pretty good, but it's, it's a different deal when you're doing dealing with all young kids. Yeah. And so you're the most experienced kid that you have. has got like minimal minutes on his, on his card, huh? Holy mackerel. Well, and he's been hurt. Wow. You have no one with any minutes. It's a brand new, here I go. Like, and they're expecting us to win the national title. So, and that's okay. I mean, look, there are others that will say we're not going to be that good. And I said, is that your hope or your opinion? (laughs) Then then you kind of figure out who it is. But, you know, we got a great bunch of guys. And here's why. They didn't come here with outlandish promises. I've told them all, if you're drinking, smoking, clubbing, chasing, don't come here. You come here because you want to be professional. You want to have professional habits. You want to be taught and challenged in every practice. You want to have a competitive spirit because you better fight 
because what happens when you move up oh. NBA, no boys allowed. And no boys up there. Second, exactly right. they, throw, ass <laughs> they, they throw in a bone in a pack of dogs. One eats. The rest of you dudes aren't eating. And that's what it is. You got to be a dog. You got to be able to fight. If you think you're going to go to that league and they're going to run things for you, they ain't running anything for you. You got to go take what you want. You got to play within, but you got to go take what you want. You think you're going to go in that league and be a volume shooter as a rookie? They stink. They'll win 15 games. If you go with Harden, you better learn a role because you're not being a volume shooter. He is. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> Guess what? You ain't in pick and roll. He is. So you better learn to be a player. You know, there are two ways of doing this, teaching kids a system of play. And then the other is let's just teach them how to play. I'm still not sure how my team will play this year. Yeah, I'll bet. I'm having a ball, though. We're trying. The other day, there was something we were doing. We were calling it a crossover and into a pin. And I said, I don't like it. Just throw it away. Don't think of it anymore. So there are two or three things that we did that I'm like, I don't like that. Stop. Let's move on. And you got to pivot when you're dealing with new teams, young players like this. Man, oh, man. Hey, Cal, we got to run. Hey, listen, I, I was glad to see Bruiser's back with you. So How about say that? Hello. How about that? I was talking to a couple of guys the other day, and I said, where's Brew? And he said, no, he went back with Cal. I was like, yes. Yeah, and tell let me say this. Tell him I said, hey, I'll reach out to him, all right? He may be, here, is Brew in there? All right, I would have walked him over here. By the way, he still looks like he did when we coached together. It makes me mad because I'm standing next to him. Look at me. Look, you can see the poofy hair. I got a ponytail in the back. I don't know if you could see it. Oh, I got the ponytail <laughs> running. I'm like, you know, it's crazy, but. No, it's great to have him back. He's a friend. He's a brother. He's uh, loyal. He's a great coach. And, you know, so we're together. But I wish the Jamaica basketball program, I wish you well, wish you luck. Um, I can just tell you um, it's a great thing to be able to bring the country together because that's what you'll do. You bring the country together. And, and that's what happened with the Dominican. I mean, they, when we went and were winning and playing for Olympic birth, they said it shut down the island. Nice, <laughs> nice. Watch those games. Yeah. And it made me feel good. So a lot of good stuff from that. Hey, Cal, we got to run. Good to see you, man. Hope to catch you down the road. We'll get you on with Coach K again. We'll do, come on the radio show again, all right? There you go. Thanks. All right, man.